Hey guys, it's been a while since I posted on YouTube, and today I'll be going over what I've been doing for the past month and a half in my TFSA portfolio. Every week, I've still been depositing $200 into this account and buying stocks every single week. Even though the market is dipping and you guys who have been investing, you know that's happening. Your portfolios are in the red, and mine is also in the red as well. But the point of today's video is for me to tell you what I'm thinking going into the market right now as an everyday investor, as well as share with you my updates in my TFSA portfolio. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just another person giving my opinion. You can take it with a grain of salt, do what you will with it, but I figured if you guys don't really have anyone to talk finance with, at least you have me to bounce ideas off with. Right now in the stock market, there is fear everywhere. And that's because interest rates are going up to all time highs for the past decade or so. In the past 10 years, you were able to get a mortgage somewhere around two to 3% in Canada. However, today, if you're going for a mortgage, you're looking at 5%. And who knows, in a couple months from now, that could be 6%. And this has got investors very scared because not only do interest rates affect the housing market, it also affects the stock market. Because as an investor, if you can put your money into these guaranteed interest paying investments and earn four or 5%, then why do you wanna risk your money in the stock market when you might not even be able to get that? And that's the mentality of why a lot of people are selling out of their investments right now and putting their hard earned cash into these guaranteed investment vehicles to reduce the risk. On top of that, inflation is also running rampant. And these two factors play a large part in why we're seeing the stock market tank. And growth stocks are getting hit the hardest because these companies still are not profitable. So in order for them to continue to fund their growth, they either have to have cash in the bank or need to go borrow from someone. And investors are not gonna to wanna to give their money to these high risk companies without a higher yield. And if they can get a yield from a GIC for like 3.85% with EQ Bank, for example, link in the description down below, then why would they lend their money out to a growth stock company for only 4% interest? they would be charging a lot higher, let's say 10 to 15% because of the risk they're taking in this company. So this is bad news for growth stock companies who are in need of cash because now their cost to borrow is a lot higher. And same thing for investors in the real estate market or even just home buyers who are looking for a home to purchase. The mortgage payments will be a lot more if the house prices stayed the same as they were three months ago. And because people's salaries don't magically go up overnight, that's why the housing market is dropping fairly heavily right now. So it looks like right now your money is safe almost nowhere except for, I guess, GICs. But even versus inflation, you're actually on the losing end because inflation is at seven or 8% and your GICs pay out about 4% each year. So really there is no winner for investors right now. Well, I guess those people who are buying put options, they're winning. And there are also other larger things at play right now. For example, the baby boomers are the people with most of the money because they're in their 50s or 60s getting ready to retire. If you're a baby boomer, do you really want to risk your retirement funds into these higher growth stocks? I don't think so. You'd be going for more safer plays like dividend stocks or GICs or just government treasury bills. These investments basically give you guaranteed interest at whatever rate is posted. As a retiree, you're just there to try to enjoy the rest of your life, not looking for those tremendous gains like people in their 20s or 30s. So looking at the current situation, it makes sense why people sold off their growth stocks. But as a long-term investor, I do see opportunities right now in the market where you can get into these growth themes for a fairly cheap price, especially for those businesses that you have high convictions about. This is where the power of dollar cost averaging really shines through. The companies that you once loved three months ago, they're going on sale. You'll see them for 20% off, 50% off, or even maybe 70% off if you're invested in those high growth stocks. So to wrap up my thoughts on the current state of the market is that I still will be depositing $200 into this TFSA account every single week. And right now I have shifted my buying patterns towards more dividend stocks because the yield of these dividend stocks is reaching four, five, or even 6% on some of the stocks that I hold. And that's the yield that I'm satisfied getting in this portfolio and using those dividends to be able to reinvest in this portfolio and compounding that interest. And that's really the name of the game. So without further ado, let's jump over to my TFSA portfolio and I'll show you all the stocks that I bought recently. So the last time that I did an update was on April 27th. So starting with this line here, these are all the new stocks that I bought. 
If you guys want, you can just pause the video and just take a look and zoom in on which companies you're interested in. Otherwise, I'm just gonna scroll through and you guys can take a look. But there is one stock that I bought that wasn't in this portfolio before, and that is a and So you can see all the different purchases that I made of a and and I've been buying it in the low 40s and high 30s range. Going over to the portfolio metrics here, you can see that my portfolio is getting crushed. I am down 21.49%. And I mean, some people might not be able to sleep at night with seeing this loss. I'm down about $3,323. But to me, this is a long-term portfolio. So I'm just seeing my portfolio on sale by about 20% here. And right now, I'm just scooping up all the stocks I think that have the best promise going forwards. A lot of the stocks I'm buying are more blue chip companies and companies that pay dividends. For example, I've been buying more Air Canada, I've been buying more Shopify, and Shopify is a bit of an anomaly because this is one of my long shot bets that I really think will do well in the next five to 10 years. Right now they're getting crushed because the current price is at $438 when three or four months ago they were trading at about $2,000 per share. So yeah, I'm getting wrecked with this, but at the same time, I'm lowering my cost basis per share. If you'll remember, maybe two or three months ago, my cost basis was around like $1,600 per share. I've dropped that all the way down to $900 per share. So doing pretty good so far. We might see even grimmer days for Shopify. It might even drop to the two or $300 mark. But at that point, I think I'm getting it for a steal. This company has basically dropped back down to pre-pandemic prices. And I think that's crazy for a company of this caliber. As you can tell, I'm super bullish on the entire business and think that they're breaking and making waves in the e-commerce market. As I've said before, Shopify allows users to sell quickly online as well as create a brand for themselves. Versus on Amazon, you only get a white background picture, which doesn't really separate you from the other companies that are selling the exact same thing. So I think companies with a brand behind them, they tend not to sell on Amazon as heavily, although they still have a presence there, but they prefer to use sites like Shopify in order to draw customers into their story and into their ecosystem to buy their products. A couple other companies that I'm buying heavily right now are Power Corporation of Canada. Right now, I just looked at their net asset value and it sits around $49 per share. However, it's trading at $32.96. So in my opinion, this is a steal looking at the dollar value. In Power Corporation of Canada, they own multiple different companies. They're basically a holding company. They own stocks of other businesses like Great West Life, which is a public company, IGM Financial, and all these other companies listed here on Wikipedia. In fact, they own a good chunk of Wellsimple and also they have investment in Coho. These are up and coming fintech companies that are a bit of a moonshot, but if this investment pays out, they could possibly earn 100, even 1000 times on their initial investment, depending on what time frame you're looking at. At the same time, they could also lose all their investment in there, but this is a very small portion of their portfolio if you look at their entire asset list here. Not to mention this company yields a dividend yield of 6.01% and a P ratio of 7.92. So to me, looking at these numbers, it looks fairly cheap and it's a company that I do want to continue to own and own more of. I've continued to buy more of Sun Life as the price is dropping and my cost basis per share is $64 versus the current price of 58. So here I will be lowering my cost basis and continuing to add shares every single week. I've mentioned before, I've been buying a and and currently my cost basis is $38.90, but the price is $36.55. So as the price continues to drop, I will continue to buy a and because this is also a dividend yielding stock. The dividend yield currently sits at 5.09% and they have a P ratio of 17.80. Market cap of $558 million and a lot more room to grow in the quick service restaurant industry. I will be doing a deeper dive on this company and I've got my notes right here, but that's for another video. And lastly in this portfolio, one I wanna talk about is Dollarama because this is a stock that's really shining in this portfolio versus the rest of the portfolio, which is in the red. I'm up 32.26% and you might be asking why is Dollarama still holding its price versus the rest of the market, which is falling 20 or 30%. Well, if you think about it, inflation as it goes higher and higher, people's dollars don't go as far. So people will stop shopping at these higher end stores like the Bay, for example, and they'll choose to go to places like Dollarama to buy the basics and stretch their dollar even further. 
So that's why right now dollar stores I think will do fairly well as inflation continues to run higher because people will flock to there and they just will generate more revenue. Before you guys go, please leave a comment down below on what stock you want me to do analysis on next. Keep up the grind and have a great day.